one day everyone's going to have to stand before Jesus and many unfortunately will hear the words depart from me I never knew you and and so the question comes is well because because he says it's only those who do the work of God that can enter into heaven and so the question is well then what is this work and so the work here Jesus tells us in John 6, 29, the work of God is to believe in the one that he sent. Quite simply, the work of God, the way to salvation is to put your faith, put your trust in the finished work of Jesus, because Jesus is God. He's the only one that could pay the price and be in our place. And so that is the work of God. It's not doing um, balancing right or wrong it's not um, a list of works that you do it is simply putting your trust in the finished work of Jesus on the cross what he did and putting your trust in him that is the work of God and but it's very important and we talk about this a lot too it's very important that we put our trust in the right Jesus because there are many different Jesuses out there and that's what the enemy does the enemy he, he doesn't, you know, come on the scene as a little red guy with a pitchfork and horns. He comes on looking like an angel of light. And so he has deception. He has different Jesuses. And so in order to have your faith in the right Jesus, you have to have your faith in the biblical Jesus. And the biblical Jesus is God. That's why he is able to be your replacement. And so if we look at Isaiah and Revelation, these few scriptures here, this will help us to, to see that the importance of understanding who God is, who Jesus is. So Isaiah 9, 6 through 7, for unto us, this is, this is the famous, um, this is the famous nativity uh, scripture for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace and so right here we see from the old testament this prophecy and this promise that the messiah is god and we see here in Revelation 22, 13, this is Jesus speaking about himself. And Jesus says of himself, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And so here we see in Isaiah 44, 6, God Almighty saying the same thing. Thus says the Lord, the King and Redeemer of Israel. The Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. There is no God but me. And so we see here this beautiful picture of the Trinity, this picture of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. God is one. There's only one God. However, he eternally exists as three persons and he reveals himself to us in these three persons. And so I, I don't, I think the Trinity is something that we're going to have to be in front of God one day to fully understand. There's nothing on earth that I'm aware of. That's a one-to-one -one, um, uh, description of that, or a one-to-one -one comparison of the Trinity, but we see it in scripture. And so it's so important that we put our trust in God, that what he did was enough. And that is salvation. That's the good news. It's not about us. It is about him. 